DR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misused PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. But the, the real misuse of it is, is it, it, you don't need to test for HIV. You don't need to test for the other 10,000 retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject. See, somebody that's got HIV generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been, HIV is a fairly rare virus. There's only one million of us out of 250, 300 million people in America that have that virus. So you have to get around, either your mother had to have it and pass it to you, or you have to really be paying a lot of attention to people that do have it and paying only attention to them and get a pretty good chance of getting it that way. It's hard to get it, but it, if you have it, there's a good chance you've also got a lot of other ones. Because you've been in the, in the market, for, you've been, it's been possible for you to get a lot of it's, it's, it's a, to test for that one and say that has any special meaning is what I think is the problem. Not that PCR has been misused. It's like what are they, is it an estimation? it's not an estimation. No, it's a real. It's a really quantitative thing. It How tells you it? something about nature and about what's there. But it 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 allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See that that that's not a misuse. That's just sort of a misinterpretation. After all the these uh, uh, PCR, this quantitative PCR, that if you just get down to a basic virological count, it's still one in a thousand to one in ten thousand uh, HIV in one to one in a thousand, one in five hundred to one in a thousand T cells. It, and it is. No, they, that, the, there's very little of what they call HIV, and what's been brought out here by Phil Pot and, and, and Isai already, the measurement for it. Is not is not exact at all. It's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together, you might think of it as an apple. But and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible, and they are the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is. Um, but it's, but it's not. It doesn't tell you that you're sick, and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. That's why it's not. So even if you believe in HIV, it can't tell the difference between virus particles or active live virus. I mean, there's a lot of questions involved. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you very, very much. What is it, what, what is it about humanity that, that, that it wants to go to all the details and stuff and listen, you know, these, Guys like Fauci get up there and start talking, you know, he doesn't know anything really about anything. And I'd say that to his face. Nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine. And he, doesn't, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people, and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans. Don't don't get me wrong, but basically, there is a there is a there's a vast the vast majority of them do not possess the the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem. That's a main problem actually with science. I'd say in this century, because science is being judged by people 
funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci. Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know, if Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, ask Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But Fauci didn't want to do it. My, my mentor, when I was in graduate school, Joe Neelans called me one day and he said something like, if you'll stop talking to the press about all kinds of issues and stuff, and I was starting to talk about AIDS a lot of times because they were using PCR to detect it, the HIV molecule, and I was, I was going to a lot of those meetings and I was thinking, these guys are on the wrong track and they're not looking, they've got blinders on in a sense. He said, if you just stop at, you know, you, you're probably going to get the Nobel Prize, but they don't have to give it to you until you're dead. I mean, they don't have to give it to you until right before you're dead. So make it easier on yourself. And, just, and I said, you wouldn't stop talking about something that you thought was important, would you, Joe? Mm. And I knew he wouldn't because he had been a, a real activist and against Vietnam and that kind of stuff. And I sort of, I, that was one thing I had learned from him was that scientists had a responsibility.